नमस्कार टुडे वी विल बिगिन विथ द थर्ड मॉड्यूल ऑन कंज्यूमर बिहेवियर एंड वी दैट विच इज मार्केट सेगमेंटेशन एंड पोजिशनिंग दिस इज थर्ड मॉड्यूल इन दिस पर्टिकुलर कोर्स विच वी शैल बी कवरिंग इन अ टोटल ऑफ टू आवर्स और टू सेशंस वी शैल बी स्पीकिंग अबाउट एग्रीगेट मार्केटिंग एंड मार्केट सेगमेंटेशन टारगेट मार्केटिंग मार्केट सेगमेंटेशन ऑल्टरनेटिव अवेलेबल फॉर सेगमेंटेशन बेसिस फॉर सेगमेंटेशन टारगेटिंग एंड पोजिशनिंग In this first hour of this module, we will be discussing aggregate market marketing and market segmentation, target marketing, market segmentation, alternatives available for segmentation, and the basis for segmentation. So let let us start here with the first uh, topic, which is aggregate marketing and market segmentation. Now the traditional way or the earlier way of doing business was mass marketing. or it was also called mass aggregation where the consumers were offered a standardized product the entire customers or the entire consumers or the entire market was offered one single standardized offering by the marketer okay uh, however as time grew it was realized that customers are unique in themselves okay they have different needs they have different wants they have different preferences they come from different backgrounds they have different uh, you know characteristics in terms of uh, descriptives or you know like geographical or demographic or they have different uh, characteristics in terms of psychographics the different kinds of social influences that influence them they operate in different kinds of environments so it was realized that uh, you can uh, marketers will not be or could not be able to satisfy the consumers with the same product and the same market offering this led to the concept of target marketing or what is called the stp or segmentation targeting and positioning market aggregation then gave way to market segmentation and of course finally today segmentation is giving way to another form which is customization or customerization so uh, let us speak little bit about the aggregate marketing and market segmentation now the marketer as such could opt for either of the strategies he could go in for aggregate marketing where he would treat the entire population as a single segment and or he could actually go in for market segmentation where he identifies like minded groups of consumers who are similar on one or more basis or criteria and then cater to these segments in a unique manner you know with the presumption that people who are like minded and people who are homogeneous within a segment will respond to the product or service offering in a similar manner they are also going to respond to the four p's in a similar manner so the choice here was either to go one size fits all you know approach where you produce a single product or a manufacture a product and sell it to the entire universe or the entire population or you go in for uh, you know some level of um, you know go in for segmentation and then i didn't you know come devise your four p's as per the needs and wants of those who comprise that particular segment market aggregation was uh in fact or aggregate marketing was where a standardized product was produced distributed with a single marketing program or the same marketing mix assumption was that consumers have similar needs and wants and they can be satisfied with a standardized offering okay so uh, working on an assumption where customers are similar and they can be offered a particular product uh, you know or satisfy who they would be able to satisfy them with a standardized offering so a standardized product was produced and distributed uh, with the same marketing program or with the same four p's and what it actually led to was a focus on mass production mass distribution uh, leading to lower costs higher profit margins and you know something which was uh, beneficial to Uh, the market with consumer because it meant lower prices and it was also beneficial to the marketer in terms of higher profits because his cost of production went down due to mass production and mass distribution uh, aggregate marketing also uh, came to be known as mass marketing or undifferentiated marketing however it was realized later that uh, this won't work you know there exist diverse customer groups they are homogeneous within heterogeneous amongst each other out amongst these various groups so uh, the assumption here for market segmentation was that customers are are unique in themselves okay and they have different needs different wants different preferences uh, there exist in the market like minded clusters of individuals uh, who are homogeneous within such groups 
heterogeneous to outside groups and so instead of offering a single standardized offering to the whole of them, it was important that uh, product and service offerings are designed as per the needs and wants of a particular segment and such uh, needs and wants are uh, you know satisfied through a you know, appropriate marketing mixes or appropriate uh, blend of four P's. So, uh, the marketer's assumption was that because of this homogeneity that existed amongst these consumers in a particular group, they would react similarly or uh, in a like-minded manner with respect to a product or service offering that the marketer would have to offer. So, working with this assumption that customers are unique, working with this assumption that uh, one size fits all does not work, also with this presumption that because uh, you know consumers are like-minded, they would behave in a similar fashion towards a product or service offering or towards a four Ps. Uh, marketers moved ahead and uh, went, you know, moved ahead and uh, you know, adopted uh, this particular concept of target marketing or, and worked, I mean, moved further with STP or segmentation, targeting and positioning. So, let us now come to target marketing. Uh, target marketing or segmentation, targeting and positioning, the STP involves a major exercise for a marketer. So, you know, he has to do three things. First is he has to identify distinct groups of buyers. Okay. Now, these distinct group of buyers would be such that they would be homogeneous within the group and they will be heterogeneous outside. Okay. How heterogeneous outside meant? Heterogeneous amongst the groups, but within the groups, the, 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 you know, the customers are going to be similar on certain basis or on certain criteria. So, the first task for a marketer was to identify such like-minded clusters of individuals or to identify such segments. Second was to go in for targeting. Okay. Once he has identified the various segments, it was also important for him to evaluate the viability of the segment and then target one or two or a few of them. It is not possible for any and all marketers to basically uh, satisfy any and all of the segments. Okay. Generally, all marketers start small, they move segment by segment, we call it segment by segment invasion. Okay, so, they move in, they, they, they target a particular segment, establish themselves, you know, stable them, stabilize themselves in that particular segment, prove themselves in that particular segment, then they move to the other and so forth. So, uh, the targeting exercise here involves uh, selecting one or two of the segments to basically cater to. Now, which are the two segments, one or two or three, or which is the segment which a, a marketer would actually uh, target would depend upon the viability of the segment. So, targeting basically involves assess, assessing or evaluating the viability of the segment so as to choose that particular segment which will give you maximum returns. And uh, you know, as, as a marketer, it is important that you identify the, the, the most viable segment for your own benefit as well as for the you know, profit and also satisfy the customer in a better and a more super superior manner. The third uh, exercise is in terms of positioning. Okay. Positioning is actually creating an image of the product or service offering in the minds of the target segment, okay. such that the person or the segment begins to identify themselves or their needs with that particular product offering or with that particular brand. It makes them feel, yes, the product is for me. No, the product is not for me. So, creating an image in the minds of the target market about the product or service basically is the act of positioning. Uh, it, it, this image which is created, uh, you know, the, the image that you create in the minds of the consumer could relate to uh, the, you know, the, either the need or the want as well as the uniqueness of the product or the superiority of the product over other products or other competitors. So, uh, this image could relate to either the need and want. So, in a way, it is going to, you know, it manifests itself in satisfaction of a need through a benefit or through a feature or through an attribute, okay. So, here, uh, you know, what, what the market has to do is uh, try and show uh, to the customer how well his product benefit benefits uh, the and helps him satisfy the need or a want or how better or how far the various features and attributes help him meet a particular need or want. So, it could either be in terms of saying yes, my product helps you do this, my product helps you fight cavities, okay, my toothpaste helps you uh, prevent bad breath. So, it could be either in terms of addressing a need or a benefit or this positioning could happen by saying how unique you are from the others or how superior you are from other players in the market. So, any and all in, 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 through these means basically you try and show you how better you are than the competitor or how unique you are than the competitor or in you know how, how much or how, how you will be able to address a particular need of the customer 
and any or all of these ways you're going to be able to position yourself in the customer's mind create an image of yourself in the customer's mind now what are the benefits of target marketing target marketing basically has a few benefits uh, first is it's not possible for you to basically be able to cater to the needs and wants and the preferences of the entire market so uh, the marketer market uh, marketer basically uh, attempts to uh, identify a few segments and designs his marketing mix accordingly so as to be able to satisfy the uh, segment better more better much better and you know more superior way than other competitors who are doing so so uh, you know segmentation based uh, targeting basically helps you identify viable segments and then create uh, or devise your four p's in a manner which satisfies the consumer in the best possible manner it helps him meet his needs in the in a better way now let us come to market segmentation what is market segmentation let us first define a market segment a group of customers who are similar to each other on certain basis okay a group of customers who are similar to each other on certain basis now they are expected to behave in a similar manner towards a product and service offering and towards a single marketing program okay so uh, we speak of a segment in terms of customers similar to each other on certain criteria and expected to behave in a similar manner towards a particular product or service offering or towards a particular marketing program so this is what we mean by segments and a market segment basically is characteristic uh, of homogeneity within the segment and heterogeneity outside now what is market segmentation then so it is a process of identifying distinct groups and or subgroups of customers in the market who have distinct needs characteristics preferences and or behaviors and require separate product and service offerings and corresponding marketing mixes okay so here we speak of the process market segmentation is the process of identifying distinct groups okay uh, or subgroups of customers in the market who have distinct needs different preferences distinct characteristics and they require different kinds of product and service offerings and different kinds of marketing mixes now remember always uh, you know it's very important to understand one thing that uh, the marketer's task is to identify segments okay segments pre exist a marketer marketers do not create segments segments pre exist a marketer and the marketer's job basically is to identify these segments he would identify segments and then he would choose the most lucrative and the most profitable of them all okay so he has to first identify segments choose the best or the most lucrative of them then design his four p's or his four or his marketing program in a manner which would be most effective uh, with that particular segment so uh, marketers basically witness a heterogeneous market and within this heterogeneity they look for some level of homogeneity via these segments okay so uh, th there is a heterogeneous market with varying customers varying needs varying marketing preferences and then you have homogeneity in the form of segments or identification of segments okay so uh, here if we speak of this further we say that uh, the marketer here has uh, is is heterogeneous you know it's a heterogeneous market and within the heterogeneous market uh, the 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 marketer looks for homogeneity so uh, you know a market he looks for segments he identifies segments and he selects one of few of them so market segment exhibits homogeneity within the group and heterogeneity outside also uh, the different segments can be effectively served with different marketing mixes so you have to understand that as a marketer you have to identify segments uh, choose the best possible or the most lucrative of them all and uh, then devise your four p's in a manner which satisfies the segment most beautifully in fact he he a marketer always witnesses heterogeneity it's a huge uh, universe it's a huge population and he witnesses heterogeneity it is through segments that he actually identifies some level of homogeneity and then he identifies uh, the segments which he has to cater to he designs his four p's or his marketing mix accordingly and moves on with his marketing strategy now segmentation can take place uh, segmentation can take place for both 
B2B and B2C markets. So, uh, when we speak of consumer markets, consumer market as we've defined earlier is the end user market, uh, where the product is bought by the consumer for his end use. Uh, examples is, for example, bread being bought for end consumption and use, or a ceiling fan being purchased to be installed at your home. On the other hand, uh, there are business markets which are defined as markets which are uh, which buys, transforms, processes, assembles, and sells further for uh, further transformation, further processing, or for further consumer personal use. So uh, here, uh, when we talk of a business market, we are essentially speaking of B two B. And the same example, if we speak of bread, uh, when bread is bought for end consumption and usage, it is to B two C. But a wheat is bought by a baker from the farmer. Okay, so it is a B two B. He transforms it into bread. On the other hand, copper wires, motors are bought by electronic companies, which then use them. an assembly and manufacture of ceiling fans so it is a b2b so in both b2c and to b2b uh, both cases or both scenarios both consumer markets and business markets segmentation will always take place and will always uh, benefit both kinds of markets now let us discuss now uh, the alternatives available for segmentation okay so uh, when you uh, speak of a segment the different levels or the different different types at which segmentation can take place the first is single segmentation where the marketer decides to treat the entire uh, market as a one segment the entire universe as one segment uh, the entire uh, you know population as one segment so he caters to the entire market with a single offering uh, with the single marketing mix so in a way what we are talking of is something very similar to mass marketing okay so when we speak of staples when we speak of sugar or when we speak of salt we are actually talking about single segmentation where you treat the entire marketing ma entire market with a single offer a sing as a single uh, you know market and you offer him a single offering uh, of course today with a uh, high level of you know differentiation taking place uh, you know you find different kinds of salts also so salt uh, you know today is moving uh, further like you have salt which is low iodine salt or salt which is you know some sodium and potassium and things like that so over there if you see um, you know different kinds of salts are also available in the market so that uh, we will not consider here but if we take general salt uh, which is for everybody in the market uh, or staples or sugar we are actually speaking about single, single segmentation another form of segmentation which can take place is differentiated um, segment marketing where the marketer decides to basically uh, you know uh, select two or more segments and he offers differentiated offerings he comes up with differentiated product or service offerings different uh, mixes marketing mixes for the two of the segments or three of the segments so if we speak about uh, you know if we take the example of soaps shampoos and other toiletries basically we are speaking about differentiated market segment marketing where uh, the companies basically select two or more segments and offer the same soap as a product uh, under two different brands priced differently you may have a soap for 32 rupees or you may have a soap for 12 rupees so here different segments different products different brands um, you know so we speak of them as differentiated segment marketing there is also something called concentrated marketing okay Uh, now here in concentrated marketing the marketer decides to cater to only a small segment okay although the product or service may appeal to others as well so what he is doing is he is focusing on a small segment and that is why concentrated marketing is also called niche marketing okay it's also called focused marketing now example for example you have sports channels on tv okay or religious channels on tv they basically focus on concentrated marketing limited audience uh, which was interested in watching sports or limited audience who were interested in watching uh, you know kind of some kind of a sermons or meditation or bhajans so uh, this is uh, what we have another form of segmentation which is concentrated marketing uh, the fourth level of segmentation is micro marketing okay so uh, micro marketing may be uh, further manifests itself in two forms local marketing and individual marketing in local marketing the marketer caters to uh, the interests of local customer groups so if movies like titanic and spider man are dubbed in bhojpuri we are actually talking of local marketing okay movies dubbed in vernacular similarly individual marketing as a, is also a kind of a micro marketing where the marketer treats a customer 
as an individual and he personalizes his marketing mix you know so uh, you know it's high level of customization the, the segment actually comprises only one person so you have expensive interior designers or jewelry designers or um, fashion designers or you have uh, you know tour and travel companies who actually customize travel tour and travel packages for you or holiday packages for you so this is uh, where we speak about uh, the level of customization where each person is treated as a segment and uh, or the product or service offering is tailored to his or to meet his or her own needs now if you see here we will just speak of the levels and the types of segmentation uh, let's take segments here uh, segments are large groups of people similar to each other on certain criteria okay so uh, you know you have segments like the tata group of hotels for example they have two segments the premium versus the economy so you have the taj hotels versus its ginger hotels so the, the same group tata group of caters to two segments the premium segment and the economy segment Uh, the taj hotels for the premium segment and the ginger for the economy segment then you have niches which are segments which are very very narrow very you know uh, specific and very narrow in nature like you have aastha and sanskar tv channels to cater to a group of people who are interested in spirituality or who are interested in religion or you have fashion designers like rohit bal and manish malhotra who cater to a very small segment of celebrities so this is in terms of niche one to one uh, marketing or customization is when we speak of segmentation at the individual level dell amazon they customize their offerings as per individual desires even fashion designers for example cater to celebrities one one to one basis so uh, this is in terms of individual marketing okay now let us come to uh, something very important and very relevant to us now uh, for uh, the remaining part of the lecture which is uh, we will speak about the basis of segmenting markets okay so we'll start with segmentation of consumer markets and then we will move on to segmentation of business markets so um, now when we have to see i just explained that a marketer has to identify like minded clusters of individual who are similar on a certain basis okay now what is this basis or what is this criteria now broadly speaking we can you could divide these criteria into two categories descriptive variables and behavioral variables descriptive variables basically comprise demography geography and customer psychographics on the other hand behavioral variables basically speak of uh, you know which are more specific to day to day consumption like consumer awareness consumer loyalty consumer usage rate okay so uh, now we will discuss both descriptive and behavioral uh, characteristics right now with the help of a table but please remember that none of these variables are used in sole for segmentation there will always be a hybrid okay so uh, there will be always be a combination between descriptive and behavioral or maybe between descriptives you know there may be a um, um, you know combination between demography and psychography there may be a combination between demography and behavioral considerations so there is always a hybrid that happens uh, you will never find a case where you know the market is segmented on just one basis because the overlap will always be there okay so when you're identifying segments you'll find an overlap in characteristics so uh, commonly used approaches for segmentation are hybrid or hybrid approaches as we call them maybe in the form of psychographic and demographic or geography and demography so we call it geography geo demographic or it may be in the form of vals which is value and lifestyle so these are commonly used approaches to identify market segments as i said these seg while while the two broad categories are in terms of uh, demographic characteristics uh, or sorry are in the form of descriptive characteristics and behavioral considerations we will find an overlap between the all of them and the commonly used overlaps are geo demographic or uh, psychographic demographic or the vals now let us study uh, each of these various considerations you know uh, or these criteria uh, whether it is uh, behavioral considerations or it is descriptive consideration so we will speak of these variables in the or these considerations uh, in in a few minutes from now 
let's start with demographic variables demographic variables you know as a part of the descriptives i just told you descriptive characteristics include demography geography and psychographics so let's first start with the demographic variables when you identify the segments on the basis of any one of the following basis you're basically using a demographic variable for segmentation okay so identifying segments on the basis of either age or gender or income or education or occupation family size family life cycle generation social class religion nationality culture subculture in any and all of these you're basically using uh, demographic variables to identify market segments for example age okay so you can you know so identify segments on the basis of age as infants kids 3 to 5 8 to 12 teenagers and adults on the basis of age you can classify these segments you can classify the market as infants kids you know identify such segments so there's an infant segment for infants kids teen adults teenagers and so forth like for example uh, manufacturers of clothes and apparel wear they identify segments on the basis of age they have clothes for children 0 to 3 years 3 to 8 years 8 to 12 years 12 to 18 years 18 and above or it is a uh, toys like fun school or leo they have you know they have a toy or fisher price they have toys which are for 0 to 3 months 3 to 6 months or 6 months to 1 year 1 to 3 years 3 to 8 years 8 years and above so this is age is used as a, as a seg as a basis for segment identifying segments in the b2c or the business to consumer market similarly the market may segments may be identified on the basis of gender where you classify the segment into male and female or man and woman so you know you have uh, you know people manufacturers of clothes of cosmetics of toiletries basically identify segments on the basis of uh, gender uh, segments are also identified on the basis of income levels you know so less than 50,000 or 50,000 to 1 lakh or 1 lakh to 3 lakhs 3 lakhs to 5 lakhs or 5 lakh and above or 15 lakh and above for example manufacturers of cars they identify segments on the basis of income level of people education can also be used as a basis of classification where uh, we classify uh, you know uh, classification where we actually identify classes in the form of people who are high school pass or intermediate or graduate or undergrad you know postgraduate or uh, you know occupation is also used as a say a basis for identifying segments as blue collared workers or white collared workers or business people or professionals um, organize you know man, you know com, uh, airline companies for example they they identify segments in the form of business and professionals so they have uh, the they 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 provide for uh, two kinds of uh, services one for the economy class and the other for the business class so this is a way how they differentiate between uh, professionals and non-professionals uh, family size may also be used as a basis for segmentation uh, you know for example uh, are you single or are you a couple or couple with two kids and are your kids you know or are you uh, something more than size, size of the family is larger than four or larger than six or this is this has implications for uh, large and small uh, packaging for example foods okay so uh, you know family size will uh, tell you whether uh, what should be the ideal uh, you know packaging size should should depending upon the um, you know the size of the family and the majority of the segment falling into that segment of uh, just single or just couple or just couple with two kids you'll be able to identify uh, and decide what is the part of the market which needs large packs or which is the part of the market which needs small packs family life cycle uh, is also used as a basis for identifying segments uh, we shall be talking about family life cycle later but uh, just to be very brief here a uh, family life cycle basically tells you about the various phases or the various stages through which a family passes right from when a person is single uh, and unmarried to when he gets married and has children to when his children leave home and to when he's left alone in the world you know I either so uh, so this is this you know we define the family life cycle in terms of single married full nest one full nest two full nest uh, yes empty nest one empty nest two solitary so again uh, you know uh, for example companies into insurance businesses or companies into food packaging again packaging of foods they would again have implications with respect to you know family identifying segments based on family life cycle um, 
Then another basis for identifying segments is in terms of uh, generation. So, uh, you know, generation X, for example, born between 65 and 76, or generation Y between 90, sorry, 83 and 2003. Uh, this has, uh, you know, implications for people in the music industry, for you know, people who are, you know, uh, into, into cassette recorders or, you know, VCDs or DVDs or CDs. So, you know, there that is where, you know, people of what age group like to hear what kind of music. So, that will have, you know, an impact on uh, implication for such, such for the music industry. Uh, the social class can also be used as a basis for segmenting markets, uh, identifying segments in the market. Uh, the, you know, you, you identify, uh, you know, in the society, uh, you divide the society into strata on the basis of income, edu income, primarily income, also uh, education and occupation. And you will be able to classify or stratify the society into lower class, upper class and middle class. So, uh, you know, uh, when, when uh, manufacturers of cars, for example, you know, identify segments based on social class. Similarly, hotels. Uh, they also classify the they identify segments on the basis of social class. Religion may also be used as a basis uh, of identifying segments. Okay, uh, while we speak about religion, of course, as we all know, you know, the four major religions, uh, you know, Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs, Christians. Uh, today, uh, and of course, Jews and you know other um, um, you know sects are also there but uh, you so how how does this uh, have an implication for a marketer today this has a big implication especially if you see uh, you know all over the world uh, you have a, you know if you if you see uh, there is clearly demarcation between halal food and non halal food to you know basically respect the sentiments of people you based and the religious sentiment. So, here you clearly classify or you, with religion comes certain customs, traditions, values, beliefs. So, clearly it is marked you know vegetarian and non-vegetarian. So, this is how you basically identify segments whether uh, the majority of your segment is a vegetarian or a non-vegetarian and what kind of uh, you know Im um, a kind of impact this could have on the kind of cuisine you offer in your restaurant. Nationality may also be used as a basis for identifying segments. This has implications for multinational companies which um, decide to move uh, across borders of their own country and want to set up business enterprises, either manufacturing or marketing units in other uh, countries. Culture is again used as a basis for identifying um, segments. You, we realize very well that there is a difference within within the country. Uh, we have within the culture we have subcultures. So uh, you have as in the country, for example, North Indian and South Indian, or East or West. And within subcultures within the South Indians themselves, you will have Tamilians and Keralites and Karnataka and Telugu. So uh, you know different the same food. Uh, you know whether it, it the same South Indian food tastes different in all these four states. So, uh, this the, similarly the kind of clothes they wear will be different in these four states. The kind of ceremonies they have will be different uh, for cultures of people living in these four states. So, that is how all of these has impl impl implications for a marketer and you could identify segments on any or all of these bases for identifying uh, segments on demographic variables. Now, we come to identifying segments on the basis of geography. So, you can also identify segments on the basis of geographical or territorial units. Uh, when you identify segments uh, on the basis of location or country or region or state or city or climate or terrain, you are basically identifying segments on the basis of geography. So, uh, you know you can see uh, for example, um, when we talk of location uh, or country. Okay, so, uh, your segment can be a local market or the domestic market vis-a-vis -vis the international market. This is relevant for all multinational companies. When we talk about region, we divide the country into north, west, east and south and identify people living in these uh, regions as, as distinct segments. When we speak about states, each and every state actually um, can be and people living in those states can be identified as different segments. For example, uh, the National Cooperative Development Council or the NCDC, okay, it's the various state cooperatives, you know, all of them are primarily into milk, 
but it's up it's parag in mp it is sanchi in punjab it is virka and in hivaria haryana it is vita okay so here we see how the ncdc basically identifies segments and then establishes its manufacturing or milk uh, you know plants in 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 uh, by these brands by these names you can also identify segments on the basis of uh, the density of the population or on the basis of the city it could be urban versus semi urban or rural so you know for example a medical you know you have hospitals in cities and polyclinics and dispensaries in villages the same apollo group has its hospitals has its polyclinics depending upon whether it is a city or it is a town whether it's an urban area or whether it's a rural area similarly a uh, climate climate can also be used uh, to identify you know people living in particular climates a uh, hot cold rainy climates or humid again this has implications for those who are into apparel industry or like example even for woolen garments and then terrain may also be used as a basis for identifying segments people in different terrains for example the terrain could be plain or rocky or hilly or sandy okay so uh, you know if the same motorcycle for example there will be two wheelers and motorcycles suited for each and every kind of terrain they would be the same bajaj would probably offer a motorcycle for you know for uh, travel on on plain roads another for travel on hilly and rocky terrain so these are basically uh, these any uh, base these are these are the various uh, bases which are used to identify segments on the basis of geography similarly we also have a uh, bases for identifying segments and these are psychographic in nature a uh, psychographic component we shall be discussing in detail in the course of this uh, this uh, this course but um, let us just have a few you know just make mention of the various bases and discuss them very briefly uh, when we talk about psychographics we are talking about say for example uh, need and motivation so you can identify your segment on the basis of need and motivation or the benefit need and motivation here implies what is it what is the customer's need and what is the benefit that he is seeking out and what is this a uh, need and what is this benefit which actually drives him into action that drives him motivates him towards a purchase okay so a benefit sort may be either the basic functional benefit or it could be in terms of safety security or it could be in terms of social need or affection need or affiliation need or status esteem for example the the basic you know use or the basic purpose of a house is to give you shelter okay that's a functional benefit but people buy flats or they buy posh villas or they buy penthouses each of them whether it's a flat whether it's a posh villa or whether it's a penthouse it's serving a different purpose altogether okay a flat may be a two bedroom flat which just gives you a functional benefit of staying uh, you know keeping yourself safe from you know animals or from human beings or from you know the climate but it could also be a five bedroom house which actually also means status or it could be a you know posh villa or it could be a penthouse all of which actually denote esteem and self actualization so the benefit which you actually uh, desire or what you seek uh, is can also be used as a basis for identifying uh, market segments uh, perception may also be used as a basis for identifying segments uh, there are people who are basically uh, low on risk or high on risk or moderate on risk similarly that is how we identify segments uh, people who are high on you know who are uh, who uh, are low on risk we call them innovators they are ready to take risks as against laggards who would not want to buy anything new for the because it's risky similarly there are people uh, you know who are price oriented or who are quality and value oriented so uh, if for example uh, uh, a strike contrast you know price oriented would probably go in for a tv video con tv and the quality oriented may go in for a sony personality also is a use, is used as a basis for identifying segments people can be high or low on innovativeness high or low on dogmatism they could be in, introverts and inner directed or they could be extroverts and other directed so the other directed or the extroverts would look to social affiliation they would look to others on the other hand inner directed would 
actually set standards for themselves. So, similarly, uh, ethnocentrism, high or low on ethnocentrism. People who are high on ethnocentrism uh, mean that they love their country, they love their country products. So, they will be more loyal to made in India products. Okay. Then there are others who are novelty seekers, who are deal prone, who love to buy from sales, from discounts. So, you can also identify segments on the basis of whether the segment is exploratory or deal and bargain prone. Um, attitude may also be used as a basis for identifying segments. People have positive attitudes, negative attitudes. They may be, they may be loyal to one or more products. Uh, pro involvement may also be based, uh, used as a basis. There are people who are high involved customers or low involved customers. Lifestyle is also used as a basis of identifying segments. Lifestyle in the form of what we call AIO or activities, interests and opinions. So, uh, work, hobbies, vacation, shopping, entertainment, sports, these are all activities. Job, home, family, fashion, food and culinary, recreation, these are all interests. Social, political, economy and business environment, they are all opinions. So, uh, you know, all of these may be used uh, to identify segments. For example, uh, the TV channels, they have this star news, star TV, star sports, star movies, all of which, uh, you know, are, uh, are, are actually serving people with different activities, interests and opinion. There are magazines like India Group, India, from India, today, India Today Group, like India Today, India, uh, you know, Business Today. Uh, woman, cosmopolitan. So, they again are channeled or uh, they, they basically serving people with different activities, interests and opinions. These were the various uh, descriptive, uh, you know, variables which we studied. Now, let us come at the behavioral variables which may be used to identify market segments. Um, you know, you can identify segments on the basis of consumer awareness as to whether people are uh, unaware, they are aware, they are informed, they are interested or they are desiring. This has implications for the marketer in terms of marketing communication. That means, whether his objective of communication or objective in promotion or his objective via advertisement should be to create awareness, to create interest, to develop a desire or to elicit an action. So, uh, you know, consumer awareness may be used as a uh, important basis for identifying segments. The benefit sought, I have just discussed the benefit sorts as a part of uh, psychographic components also. Uh, another example which we can have here is for example, cakes and pastries. You have normal uh, ones for snackers and sugar free for the calorie conscious and for the diabetics. Similarly, toothpaste, there is forens for gums, there is pepsodent for fighting tooth decay or there is close up to prevent bad breath. Uh, buying occasions can also be used as a basis for identifying segments. Uh, for example, uh, you know morning or night or ex now 24 hours, uh, weekday or weekend, I mean do people uh, buy on weekday or weekend. So, this is uh, relevance for the movie industry, you know all movies are released on weekends. Similarly, occasions and seasons, the greeting cards for example, they have basically they identify segments on the basis of occasions, on the basis of seasons, on the basis of uh, you know different festivals. Uh, leisure and urgency may also be used as a basis. Uh, you know, you have implication here for the normal post versus the courier service or versus the speed post. Buying usage and frequency can also have, uh, it can be used as a basis for identifying segments. For example, um, you know, are you using a product in routine or are you using it frequent or are you using it uh, in, you know, emergency. Uh, for example, a calcium tablet versus a band-aid. A calcium tablet may be consumed uh, on a routine basis, but a band-aid would only be used in emergency. Buyer readiness, readiness stage, loyalty status and usage rate. Usage rate is in terms of uh, are people light users or heavy users. Again, this has implications for the packaging industry. And finally, shopping orientation of people, is it more economic in nature, is it convenient or its status. So, economic means people would be, uh, would prefer deals and bargains, they will go to smaller shops. Convenience means that they would visit departmental stores and status means that they would prefer visiting malls and buying brands. So, this is how uh, these are the bases which can be used to identify segments. Um, in the B2C scenario. Now, let us come to segmenting in business markets. So, the basis for segmentation in business markets uh, uh, are also, there are about five bases for segmenting uh, business markets. Demographic, that means while uh, I am into a B2B uh, 
you know, as a business to business buyer, as, sorry, as a, as a business to business seller, I, I, I would be concerned about the kind of industry I should be segmenting, you know. So, the, the segments, the industries could be segmented on basis of demography, on basis of demography here meaning the type of industry, the size of the company, the technology used or they could be identified, you know, segmented on the basis of geography, the location. Uh, seg business markets could also be segmented on the basis of purchase approach and orientation. So, this would include consumption and usage rate, should order sizes be small or bulky, buying situations, uh, should it be a straight rebuy or a modified rebuy or a new task, we shall be discussing these in the next sessions, uh, loyalty and partnerships business orientation or transaction orientation, is it price oriented or is it in the form of consultative orientation or solution oriented or is it procurement oriented or quality uh, oriented or is it strategic value oriented or in terms of partnerships. So, um, these are uh, you know ba another basis would be in terms of purchasing criteria, uh, do uh, you know how do you identify segments also on the basis of the purchasing criteria of your client are they quality conscious or are they price conscious or are they looking for services. Two other bases which can be used to identify uh, segments in B 2 B scenario are purchasing methods and personal variables. Purchasing methods are in terms of uh, what does the buying center in the organization uh, uh, comprise of ok, wh wh what are the who are the different representatives in the buying center, what is the bu power balance, what is the equation of different departments in the buying center, wh how is the purchasing function, it is centralized or is it dentist and decentralized, uh, are, the, are they looking for transactional exchanges one time or collaborative exchanges is long time partnerships and purchasing policies are they on lease or are they on contract. Uh, finally, personal variables also have an important role to play in terms of uh, you know how similar am I to the other people to my client ok. So, uh, buyer seller similarity in terms of vision, strategies, orientation, attitudes etcetera, matters of trust, matters of loyalty they all also are a part of personal variables which may be used to identify segments. So, these are the various uh, bases of segmenting business to business markets. We have also discussed the various segment basis for identifying business to consumer markets. This brings us an end uh, to the session 1 of module 3 which is market segmentation uh, and positioning. But before we do that let us uh, have a look at the references and further reading as well as have a short uh, quiz as we proceed. Uh, the various books uh, which you could refer to are Kotler and Keller. Marketing Management Pearson, Loudon and Bitta, Consumer Behavior Tata McGraw-Hill, Peter and Olson, Consumer Behavior and Marketing Strategy McGraw-Hill, Schiffman and Kanuk, Prentice Hall, Consumer Behavior again and Wells and Trensky, Consumer Behavior John Wiley. Uh, now, let us come to a few questions. So, the first question uh, which is very frequently asked is uh, define market segmentation. So, uh, it is a process which involves identifying uh, like minded clusters of individuals who, uh, who are similar on certain basis and they are similar to each other homo homogeneity within the segment, within the class, within the group and heterogeneity outside. So, and then uh, this, this is what this is how we define market segmentation. The second question which we can have is differentiate between the following mass marketing and segmentation. So, what is mass marketing and what is what is market segmentation? As we have said mass marketing is in terms of aggregation marketing or uh, you know undifferentiated marketing or mass marketing where you speak of mass production, mass distribution, one size fits all and the same standardized offering being offered to the entire population. On the other hand we have a segmentation where we speak of identifying like minded clusters of individuals and then providing them uh, you know an offering product or service offering as per the needs and wants of that segment. Uh, what are the different levels at which segmentation can take place? Well, they can take place at the segment level or at the uh, you know select you know concentrated le segment level or it could be local area or it could be uh, individualized or highly customized one to one uh, basis of uh, you know at which segmentation can take place. 
What are the basis of segmenting consumer markets? Broadly speaking, two bases of segmenting consumer markets, descriptive variables and behavioral characteristics variables. Descriptive characteristics include geography, demography and psychographics and behavioral variables include a large number of bases like loyalty rate, usage rate, benefits sought, awareness rate, I mean, stage of awareness, uh, etc. So, these are the different questions which can be asked. Now, let us come to a quiz. Uh, the first question again, we will start with the true and false. So, uh, segments are created by marketers. So, this is some statement is it true or false? Well, it is absolutely false. Marketers do not create segments, they pre exist the marketer, marketers only identify segments. The second question is concentrated marketing is also called niche marketing. This is a true statement. Yes, concentrated marketing is also called focused marketing or niche marketing. Multiple choice questions, which of the following is not a true statement? Market aggregate aggregation gives way to target marketing, finally giving way to customization. Segments pre exist a marketer, they already exist. Niches are narrow in scope or all of the above. Okay, so, yes, all of them are true, they are all true. Okay, the, this, the various statements, market aggregation does give way to target marketing, finally giving way to customization, segments pre exist a marketer, niches are narrow in scope and all of these statements are true. So, your answer is D. Question number 2, which of the following is not a behavioral variable? Consumer awareness, benefit sought, buying occasions and AIO. Okay. So, yes, the, not a behavioral variable, it is AIO. AIO is a psychographic variable. Fill in the blanks. Target marketing comprises three constituents, segmenting, dash and positioning. So, it is targeting. Seg segment marketing comprises three constituents, segmenting, targeting and positioning. When the marketer caters to the entire market with a single offering and the same marketing mix, it is known as dash segmentation. So, it is known as single segmentation. The two broad bases of segmenting of consumer markets may be divided into two broad categories of variables. These are dash and dash. So, these are descriptive and behavioral. Short answers. Mention the levels or types at which segmentation can take place. Segmentation takes place at single segmentation differentiated segmentation, concentrated segmentation or niche or micro marketing which can be either local or individual. Mention any five demographic bases on which segmentation can take place. So, it could be age, gender, income, education, occupation, family style, family life cycle, generation, social class, religion, nationality, culture, subculture um, and many of others. Mention any five behavioral variables on which segmentation can take place. So, it could be consumer awareness, benefit sought, buying occasion, buying uh, frequency, usage frequency, buyer readiness rate, loyalty status, usage rate, shopping orientation, etc. And finally, name any two kinds of hybrid segmentation. So, the two kinds of hybrid segmentation are psychographic or demographic and Geodemo, geodemographic which is geography and demographic and vals which is values and lifestyles. So, this brings us to the uh, conclusion of the first session in module 3. We shall continue with the next session uh, in, uh, on another day. Thank you.